today we'll discuss about reticulocyte count corrected reticulocyte count and reticulocyte production index so these reticulocytes are the red cells uh, that have been recently released from the bone marrow and uh, they can be identified by staining with supravital dye that precipitates ribosomal RNA. They can be identified in the methyl blue stain as well. And they usually appear blue with reticular appearance due to the residual RNA. So these are the residual RNAs. As you can see, this blue is staining. So after 24 to 36 hours, this RNA is metabolized and then they convert into the normal red blood cells. These reticulocytes, they are the precursor of the red cells. They are produced from the bone marrow. From the bone marrow, uh, when this uh, mitopoietic stem cell uh, differentiates into the erythroblast and then through the various stages, this erythroblast leads to the formation of the reticulocytes and these reticulocytes come into the circulation and after one day, they become the mature red cells. This is uh, very important because if you understand this, we will know what happens in anemia and why we need to calculate the corrected reticulocyte count. So what is the normal reticulocyte count? Normal reticulocyte count is around 1 to 2 percent. Some books state that this normal range can range from 0 0.8 to 2.5 percent as well. Uh, again in this picture you can see these are the reticulocytes. So what happens in anemia? Normally in response to any loss of the red blood cells there will be increased production of the reticulocytes. That is when the red cells decrease in the number because of the anemia, bone marrow will try to increase the production of the red blood cells. So when the bone marrow is working fast to produce more RBCs, more reticulocytes will be sent to the circulation. So reticulocyte counts will increase in the circulation. And this usually occurs within two to three days of major acute hemorrhage and the peak is around, around six to 10 days. So when the hemoglobin is normal, like in normal individuals, these reticulocytes uh, are released into the circulation without one day left as reticulocytes. So after one day, they will turn into the red blood cells. But with anemia, what happens is these reticulocytes or sometimes even the earlier erythroid cells can be released into the circulation very prematurely. Normally, uh, in response to the anemia, reticulocytes should increase. But if uh, reticulocytes are not raised in response to the anemia, then we have to think of that there may be insufficient time for the bone, uh, bone marrow to respond to the anemia or there might be some defect with the red cell production in the bone marrow. So why do we need to correct the reticulocyte count? We need to correct this because the raw reticulocyte count is misleading in anemia. In anemia, this reticulocyte count will increase. However, the RBC count is usually decreased. So because of this decrease in the RBC counts, there can be the falsely raised reticulocyte count. So in anemia, we need to correct the reticulocyte counts to avoid this error. And again, we need to do the second correction in certain cases. If there are a lot of premature cells in the circulation. So during like uh, during hemolysis or uh, in the instances where the bone marrow has to act very rapidly to produce a lot of reticulocytes or RBCs, in those cases, sometimes these premature cells or the early stage of the reticulocytes or even the uh, precursors of the reticulocytes can come into the circulation. And these cells, they survive in the circulation for more than one day, unlike the reticulocyte count. So we need to correct the reticulocyte count uh, by considering this prolonged reticulocyte maturation time. So to decide whether to correct or not, we have to look at the blood picture. So if there is polychromasia, like uh, as we can see, there are uh, large purple red cells which are suggestive of polychromasia. And if the polychromasia is present, uh, we need to do the second correction. However, if there is no polychromasia, the second correction is not indicated. So now let's learn how to calculate the reticulocyte production index. The first correction for the reticulocyte count is for the anemia. So for the correction for anemia, we use this formula, corrected reticulocyte count equals to reticulocyte percentage times patient's hematocrit, hematocrit divided by the normal hematocrit, which we usually take as 45 percentage. So if a person has a reticulocyte count of 9% and if the hemoglobin is 7.5% and the hematocrit is 23%, 
then the absolute reticulocyte count or the corrected reticulocyte count will be patient's reticulocyte count multiplied by patient's hematocrit divided by 45 that is 4.5 in this patient so this value uh, corrects the reticulocyte count for the anemia so that is the first correction now for the second correction we do the correction for the longer life of the prematurely released reticulocytes in the blood so for the second correction in addition to the formula used for the corrected reticulocyte count we use this maturation time as well simple formula is corrected reticulocyte count divided by maturation time or we can use reticulocyte percent times patient hematocrit by normal hematocrit divided by maturation time we need to learn a little bit more about the maturation time to understand the reticulocyte production index this maturation time of the reticulocytes increase uh, with the decrease in the hematocrit like in the, uh, if the hematocrit is 15 and below it takes around 2.5 days for those reticulocytes to mature into the rbc's similarly if the hematocrit is between 36 to 45 and these rbc's they take around uh, one day to mature into the rbc's so based on the hematocrit level of the patient we have to use the different uh, maturation correction while calculating the reticulocyte production index however for the ease we can use 2 as the maturation correction uh, let's see what will be the reticulocyte production index in the same patient so if a person has a reticulocyte count of 9% and if the hemoglobin is 7.5 and if hematocrit is 23 then reticulocyte production index would be reticulocyte uh, count in percent multiplied by patient's hemoglobin divided by normal hemoglobin and this divided by the maturation time correction that is 2 so basically it's similar to corrected reticulocyte count divided by the maturation factor so how to interpret this um, reticulocyte production index so if the reticulocyte production index is less than 2.5 it suggests that bone marrow is not being able to produce the adequate amount of the reticulocytes to compensate for the anemia so this can occur in hypoproliferative disorders or in the maturation disorders and if reticulocyte index is more than 2.5 it is suggestive that bone marrow is trying hard and producing a lot of reticulocytes to compensate for the hemolysis or hemorrhage so this uh, reticulocyte production index is only used in cases of anemia and if the hemoglobin is normal we don't uh, correct the reticulocyte counts so in anemia uh, when the reticulocyte production index is less than 2.5 it is suggestive of hypoproliferative disorder or maturation disorder like bone marrow damage or iron deficiency or sometimes even renal diseases or maturation disorders like uh, folate deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency sideroblastic anemia and if the index is more than 2.5 uh, it is suggestive of hemolysis or hemorrhage and this uh, this can occur in various situations like blood loss intravascular hemolysis membrane abnormalities or sometimes even the immune destruction so these are the references which we have used for preparing our video thank you so much for watching if this video was useful please subscribe to our channel